Hey, so you're probably here because you've gotten VR motion sick before. Well, if you would like to completely get rid of it for sim racing and flight experiences, and you're willing to invest just a bit of energy in a couple of days time, then this guide is for you. So first of all, the important question is, does this really work? Well, yes, I'm sure it's going to work. Trust me, I've been there, I know it, and I have also done this with other people, so I'm sure this works. But this will only make you overcome VR motion sickness if you are willing to watch this guy completely and try to understand the concepts, as well as looking to put some effort into actually executing this step. The training steps presented later are no magic without the rest. For flight simulation users, I would really ask to try to understand the concept behind each step so that you could convert it to the flight experiences, since I won't be doing like a completely dedicated video for flight experiences. But all of the steps here can be successfully converted to flight simulation steps as well. Now, a very important thing to understand with VR is that, just like in real life, you have different areas and categories, different disciplines. This might be hard for some new people to understand. VR is not just one thing, it's really many things. I mean, you have activities like walking, running, driving, flying, web swinging, you name it. And each discipline, the more different from the activities that you're used to or trained to, the more it will work your brain differently. That's really important to understand. Now what this means is that you could be like really good with the driving experiences and not being VR motion sick ever, but being motion sick like after a minute on, on a VR shooter. Generally, the experiences within VR have different levels of intensity and the experiences with sim racing and flight simulation belong to the more extreme experiences. I might also be doing a separate tutorial for non-sim racing and flight experiences. Another very important thing is that before putting on your headset again, you have to make sure you're feeling completely okay. I mean, no nausea, no headaches and no doubts about it. Now, if it does, however, take more than a day to recover from nausea caused by VR, then most likely the nausea wasn't caused by VR. Most likely it was caused by some food or something else. Now let's go to the preparation and setting up. So first of all, if you still haven't done so, then do the beginning VR tutorials and setting up steps for your VR headset so that you get familiar with your headset. You have to understand things like setting the IPD and what it means. You have to also make sure that you have learned how to wear the headset so that the picture is as clear as possible. Don't get me wrong, this might take multiple days sometimes. Now for starting out, choose a sim which supports VR and which you know well and which your machine has no trouble handling. For example, you could use a Seto Corsa. Now, first map the center button if you haven't done so because you're going to be needing a lot of it later. Now, set up the graphical settings for VR properly, because if you have been using the monitor before, then most likely they're set too high. Let's talk about target FPS. There is no real target for FPS. It depends on your headset and what your PC can handle. So, generally, higher FPS is better. But if your PC can't handle it, it's going to be worse. So, just pick the refresh rate which is best for your machine to handle. Having stable FPS is really better than having higher FPS in the peaks. Next, turn on a synchronous reprojection or motion smoothing or whatever it's called for your sim. What this basically does is that if your machine can't render real frames, like 90 frames, then it's gonna render 45 frames instead and will try to synthesize the rest of the frames. This usually is better for VR. But here again, you have to be a bit careful because if you end up configuring your settings so that your PC is constantly switching between 
asynchronous with projection and real frames, then it's not going to be comfortable and it's better actually to have constant asynchronous reprojection with higher graphical settings than constantly the switching between real frames and synthetic frames. But if it's just sometimes switching to asynchronous reprojection, then it's all fine. You could probably Google for the graphical settings for your headset and uh, your GPU if you have a popular one. Otherwise, you could also try benchmarking because various sims like Assetto Corsa support benchmarking. So you would just start to benchmark with the selected settings and then center VR and then basically you can move around the headset without wearing it, of course. And there's another very special setting for VR that's lock to horizon or stick to horizon. Pretty much all sims support it, but it's called differently. What it basically does, it, it prevents the camera to be locked to the car, which then kind of prevents the vision shaking for you. And this feels much better. Some sims also support defining it in percent. So 95% would probably be a more realistic value, but for the beginning, just target locking to horizon. Since this guide is going to be a bit longer, I decided to split it into smaller parts so that I can release them as soon as possible. So that's it for part one. The next part is going to be about the main execution steps and how to execute them. If you did like this part, I would be really grateful if you left a like and subscribe for more of my videos. Thanks for watching and goodbye.